Hello, I'm Dan. I'm Simon. And this is the Wikicast, a podcast where Wikipedia takes us to a random article each week and we talk about what we find. Simon, what are we talking about this week? This week, Daniel, we're talking about Tanvir Sadiq. Now, of course, of course we are. As per the rules of Clark Tholicism, I click the random article button only once. And mm. this is this is what we've got. And I, the, in the first paragraph, there's already at least one thing which has caught my attention. Right. Um, so I'll read you uh, the summary and you'll see what I mean at the end of this paragraph, okay? Mm. So, Tanvir Sadiq is the political secretary slash advisor to the former chief minister of Jammu and Kashmir, Mr. Omar Abdullah. So he's an advisor to someone important. Uh, mm. Earlier, he was the youngest spokesman of the Omar Abdullah-led Jammu and Kashmir National Conference Party. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes on to say a, a bunch of stuff that he does. Um, uh, he's written for a bunch of newspapers, including the Gulf News, India Today, The Hindu, Greater Kashmir on Politics, Social Issues, and Matters Relating to the Empowerment of Youth and Women, and is also a known blogger. Then the last sentence, Tanvir Sadiq is the son of a senior politician of Jammu and Kashmir, Sadiq Ali, and the grandson of Jaffa Ali, who was a papier-mâché artist and entrepreneur from Srinagar, Kashmir. Wow. Now, you know that you've made it when your wrong reference in Wikipedia is that you were a papier-mâché artist. That's so, that's, even for this podcast, that's niche. Really niche. And, that, and that's saying something, because it's random every week. I've got to, I'm going to have a quick search. Jaffa Ali. Is there anything else? Is it spelled J-A-F-F-A? Guy? As in a Jaffa cake? Uh, no, it's J-F- J-A-F-F-E-R. Oh, that's sad. Uh, is there anything else online about him? It, se- it seems that this guy is only known, his art is only known to us because his son and grandson went on to do something. Oh, wow! Are you kidding me? That's... Okay, I'm going to send you a link on the old Faki book. This okay. apparently is made out of papier-mâché. Apparently in Kashmir, this is quite a tradition because this stuff doesn't look like it's made of papier-mâché at all. Uh, hang on, where are you? You're a uh, sexy boy on Facebook. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, that's mind-blowing. Wow. Wow. Yeah! I'll My include goodness. a link that I just sent to Dan in the show notes. But this stuff looks like it's ceramic. Yeah. Bloody hell. That's really... Well clever. done, uh... Jaffa. Well done, Jaffa. Uh, I mean, I've only ever used papier mache once. I made a stormtrooper outfit. I, made, I used it to make the pauldrons, but uh, ah. uh, and also the helmet. But um, mm. not not a, not a medium that I'm used to using. Are you? Have you used papier mache much? I imagine I would have done while I was, you know, in primary school, and we had various weeks where, you know, when you were young. Well, certainly at, at, at both of the schools I went to, both the one in the UK and the one in the Netherlands, in that kind of primary stages, we would have different uh different like focuses on each week in areas mm-hmm. of history so obviously when you were coming along and you had to you it was like a viking week i might make a helmet i would probably would have made use papier mache papier mache there or an egyptian thing and made a like a tutankhamun-esque mask or something i don't know but i certainly i haven't i, I can't say i've touched it in the last half a decade because <laughs> it's paper it's like newspaper and then is it pva glue and, and flour do you put something in with the glue i think it's just PVA glue and paper. And presumably water, I guess, to water down the glue to make it a bit Maybe. more pliable. Maybe. Because, yeah. yeah, I haven't, I, I don't even think I did it in primary school. It was one of those things, like everyone, I, I remember doing salt dough mm. in primary school and then you could like fire that. Uh, mm. And it was like a form of earthenware. But like, it, I don't know, I don't think, I don't think we could afford papier mache as a school. <laughs> British education teaches you the essentials, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It teaches you that and how to make a volcano out of vinegar and bicarbonate of soda. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. So basically, so that that was this guy's grandpa. Um. I know. We know from this that um he was born on the seventh of July, but not what year. And his picture, he looks like, you know, Tom Scott, the YouTuber. He has like a very young face, mm. but grey hair. And mm. I'm like, I have no clue how old you are, man. I literally, mm. you you could be anything from twenty to fifty. No, uh, it's funny. It's funny you should mention that because I I had this um. I had this today. We were watching back um, some of the videos, some of the promotional videos for the Chapel Choir, now that we're advertising the new places for next year. Yes. And in that video, there's a series of kind of of different clips from what we've what we've been up to the, over the course of several years, including, you know, you know, whether it's Bath or 
or Malta or all, the, all of these different places. And I was specifically looking at the clip that showed a sev- several of us walking along a street in Malta. Yes, and I know Tom, exactly the one you mean, yeah. Tom Tom Noon is in the background, and Tom looks like a different human now, as in I didn't think it was Tom, and then went, oh my God, it's Tom. <laughs> I've looked back at me. The only difference in me from when I started is that my hair is a lot longer. I have not changed at all. Yeah, we um we were looking through, so uh, we'll come to this in a bit, but basically Pixel I got Girl and I and uh, yeah, Lily, we, we were going yeah. through old videos and... It was pretty. It was pretty funny to see how much people have changed, but also just like how incapable Michael is of giving a, a normal person's interview. Yeah, like he's just one of these people that like the smile is like a. It's like that GIF of Mark Zuckerberg at the senatorial hearing, where yeah. um, like the smile is turned on and then off. Like, yeah. Um, and yeah, how some people have really changed, and some people look exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, for some people, they just like it's easy. They've put on weight, or they've let their hair grow. But yeah, you've basically stayed. There's nothing. This the it's so frustrating because I mean, it, I, there there is nothing that has changed about me. There's there. I cannot think of a single feature other than my hair is now usually a lot shorter than I would usually have it because it's just easier. But my face is just it's a, it's exactly the same. Do you think you'll look like this when you're like 50 or 60? I imagine so, yeah. I don't think... When I turn 30, I'll look 22. Yeah. I'll start looking what I should look like. I'm, <laughs> I'm only 21 at the moment. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just really strange. I don't I don't understand. So it, um, it's, at some point, it's going to come in really handy. At the moment, it's just frustrating. Is your forehead, do you think, going to grow? Like, you know how people's ears and noses, they grow throughout their lives? Mm. Uh, you know, do, do you think your forehead will just continue to encroach? I imagine like a, like I'm just going to spend most of my life growing into it. I think the forehead is it <laughs> is, is a final size, whereas eventually the rest of my face will catch up. I mean, we can hope. I I, I certainly hope that it doesn't get any bigger because I feel yeah. like I don't think it can. I mean, I, I think it's, it's, it's scientifically <laughs> impossible for, for it to get any larger. The gravity uh, well of your forehead. I've been, I've been out. I've been out with 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 folk who I haven't met before i've been making new friends at various different parts and things and i've noticed that my forehead isn't actually as big as it could be oh i uh, see there's there's a number of people that i've 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 i've, I've met on my travels <laughs> and and by my even and you know by my standards if it causes me to go that is a massive forehead <laughs> um it's uh yeah it's are you, are you talking th- about the per, uh, the person dan's forehead by any chance no, well no, actually, I, th- I mean, I, d- I don't think I don't think Dan's forehead has a particularly massive forehead, um, other than my forehead, which does is is, is fairly sizable. Um, but it's been I, it hasn't made me feel kind of good about myself being like, oh, my forehead's not actually as big as others. <laughs> there are it's people actually who've got just, it worse than me. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 made me kind of go like, oh, but that was kind of like my thing, and now mine just looks a bit like n- normal in comparison. Um, it's quite uh, no, sad. trust me, mate. It doesn't. It <laughs> don't just oh, okay. Next time I go out on these part and I see these people again, I'm, I'm deliberately being very vague because I uh, I don't want to come across as uh, inconsiderate. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, you, you will look at them and go, oh, okay, I see. That's, that's how bad it could be. <laughs> anyway, we were talking about Tanvir Sadiq. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we were talking about Jaffa, and now I want a Jaffa cake, and they're in the cupboard, and they're not far away. If you want to get a Jaffa cake, I will. I will talk, tell the readers a little bit more about Tanvir Sadiq. If you like. that's all right, I'll, I'll I'll hold on. I'll be a trooper. Well, basically, this guy, uh, uh, yeah, he looks like um, Asian Tom Scott, uh, but basically because he's got grey hair and it's kind of the same. Um, he has a bachelor's in information technology and management. Um, he was the head of the national conference cyber cell. Gosh, that's, I bet that's a little less interesting than it sounds. Uh, and has been a politician. I'm not brave enough for p- politics. Um, uh, staunch supporter of this guy. Yada yada. He's su- oh what? Okay, <laughs> right. Achievements and present stand. So mm. there are uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, sentences. Well, five paragraphs in this section. The first one starts, he remains a staunch supporter of Omar Abdullah and has been writing extensively. Bada, 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 bada. Um, he's been harassed a number of times. He's, he writes for a p- paper. This thing is very badly structured. Next par- Next line. He's also a columnist for such and such. Next line. He believes that Kashmir's destiny lies in the continual harmony and brotherly relations between India and Pakistan that will make borders irrelevant. Good idea. Next sentence. He survived many attacks by terrorists. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> yeah. Just drop that little bomb. Well, quite yeah. literally, I suppose. Um, yeah, if you'll pardon the, the horrific pun. If you'll pardon the pun. Um, what? Don't, you can't just drop that in there. I'm going to no. have to click on the link here. What? Is the link terrorism? <laughs> No, it's, um, yeah, there is a link to, as if you didn't know what terrorists meant, there is like yeah. a hyperlink over the word terrorist. But Brilliant. there is a, a, a citation uh, from Tribune India, uh, which doesn't seem to work. Oh, no, here we go. Wow, yeah. PDB counsellor escapes bid on life. Uh, going, Good going deal. once, going twice. Sold to the devil. Um, oh, my God. A Hezbollah Muja. Mujahideen militant and a woman were killed in separate incidents while a PDP councillor escaped an attempt on his life, official sources said today. The bullet-ridden body of Hezbollah militant was recovered by the police. Wow. Wow. Where are you reading this article from? Because you would not be able to publicise in a BBC article bullet, <laughs> bullet-ridden body. Uh, it might take a little while to load. Um, I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be some kind of like... It's, a, it's on, the... on Tribune India. Yeah, there you go. I would, literally, the word I was thinking was it's going to be like the something Tribune, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or the Daily Mail or something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, that's a point, actually. I was listening to the Today programme on Radio 4 this morning, like first mm. thing, and they were discussing the um, a departure of the person who's been heading up. I can't even remember his name because it's not worth my time. Uh, the person who was heading up the Daily Mail uh, Senor for years. Twat, it may Yeah, be. And, and basically they had a supporter of his, and then they had somebody from uh, who was a senior editor at The Guardian debating mm. his legacy. And it just descended into the fact that, like, the Daily Mail lady was an absolute harridan mm. and was saying, like, yeah, well, The Guardian's failing. How long are The Guardian's going to stay in business for? Mm. Like, your campaign's a <laughs> shit. And, the, the, like, this poor lady was, like... You know, they were just venomously attacking one another. And then John Humphreys was like, well, and we'll have to draw a close to that. And it was like, such and such. Hated by many, loved by more. And I was like, yeah. you can't say that! Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, like wow. the, the actual audacity, the balls on this woman to say that the Daily Mail wasn't a racist publication. Like, it hasn't in some way, you know, had a negative effect on minorities in the UK. It's, oh, absolute c- bag mm. um anyway we Indeed. were talking about this pdp counselor um yeah so basically there were these terror incidents this pdp guy sadiq uh tanvir uh was uh riding in a motorcade and was open fired on but he was fine and there you go uh, was his motorcade made of papier mache i can hope so reinforced be, like his granddad really knew his stuff it was yeah. like you know one day this bulletproof papier mache is going to save your life grandson mm. Uh, also, the headlines beneath this. Uh, <laughs> okay, the the headlines beneath this. Uh, CRPF Joanne arrested for raping minor. Not so funny. God One sake. below that. Grenade thrower boy booked. <laughs> booked for what? Weddings and bar mitzvahs. In a rare, yeah. uh, in a rare case of its kind, a teenaged boy arrested by the police allegedly for lobbing a grenade in a Shopian town was has been booked for juvenile delinquency. Wow. I mean, that's less delinquent and more... Well, I mean, it, it, it merges on a terrorism attack, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, oh, those, apparently those even... delinquents with their grenades and AK-47s, when will they learn? Apparently he was a 14-year-old boy, uh, and they've given his cla- what class he's in and what school. Um, uh... Oh, I thought you were meaning, like, social. Yes. Well, I mean, no, it's not... He's I terribly know how poor. Deal the one, one, still is in India, but, like... one can hardly be surprised. They just need to entertain themselves. Uh, yeah, basically, he'd been paid Good 500 Lord. RS, I guess. I don't know what the currency of Pakistan is. Uh, oh, no, it's India, isn't it? So it's re- is it rupee? That's the currency of India, right? Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't think that was the abbreviation, though. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. I don't know. Um, but yeah, like he was paid 500 RS to carry out this attack, and he'd been given uh, a grenade. Yeah, he'd been promised 1,000, but he'd only been paid 500. Jeez. Mm. Uh, and then... Uh, two other headlines. Students... Ah, RS, Mauritian, Nepalese, Pakistani, and Sri Lankan rupees. Oh, Pakistani, probably. Yeah. But the, um, the previously, India? the previously, uh, uh, previously, the Indian rupee, um, uh, it then got a Unicode, like, symbol, but it was RS oh. and then RE. RE was used more commonly because RS was the Mauritian, Nepalese, Pakistani, and Sri Lankan one. Well, this was from 2007, so this might predate that, maybe? So... Yeah, so 2007 would have been prior. So in on the 15th of July 2010, it was granted a Unicode symbol. 
which looks quite oh, interesting okay. actually. And then previously R S or R E, but commonly R E. Okay. Um. So, but then below that, there are two other headlines: students ransack power substation, nine arrested. Um, uh, which. Uh, what these headlines are metal i mean to be fair if you've got a country of a billion people there's going to be interesting stuff in the news every day um True. hundreds of students ransacked the power grid substation of rajuri town in jammu and kashmir which is where this dude was from um apparently they were agitated over unscheduled power shedding oh if there's any my my it least really, favorite kind it, of shedding it is riles unscheduled. You up. i know you i know what you're like yeah, um, apparently, officials said they st- the students went berserk and damaged over a thousand electronic energy meters. Wow! Wow! And then beneath that, two killed, five hurt as train rams into matador. Wow! Oh, I think a matador is a type of car. Yeah, not like someone who does bulls. Like this, this train, this matador was like a runaway train. I will stop him. Yeah, he's standing in front of the standing in front of this like this blazing train with a little red, red flag. Like. <laughs> I I know this. I'm I'm stereotypically yeah. Spanish. <laughs> For some Amazing. reason, it was on holiday in India. Yeah, why not? Anyway, San- Tanvir Sadiq. So yeah, he's, well, he's... if you think about it, actually, there's a there's a there's a comical irony there because if a matador was to holiday in India, Indians would hate him. Because cows are sacred, aren't they? I don't know if they actually are sacred. If that's just a common misconception in the I West. think they are to a degree. I think it's there's there's a joke that's made about them being like superbly like just next level. You know, like the way Egyptians treated cats. But they, I, I believe there is something there because whenever you talk about travel programs, they're all they always say. And yeah. these pro- these travel programs would have fact checked. I would have thought. Well, okay, so there is an article: cattle in religion and mythology. And there's an India subsection. Uh, con- the Constitution of India mandates the protection of cows in India. The slaughter of cattle is allowed with restrictions, but only for bulls and buffaloes, and not cows in 14 states. It's completely banned in six states, with pending litigation to the su- in the Supreme Court. Um, while there's no restriction in many states, this has created communal disharmony frequently leads to unwanted incidents um while the cow is still... unwanted incidents like barbecues <laughs> yeah uh while the cow is still respected and honored by most of the indian population there has been controversy over the treatment of cows during uh the holiday of gopastami uh go go pastami go go pastami what i don't know go pastami sounds like something that would happen in italy it's a it's a yeah the italian festival of go pastami oh uh, sorry hi there siri she was getting uh, excited we were, uh, we were trying to find things out, and she's like, I want to help. Uh, and then, yeah, doing a great this, job. this lack of sacredness towards the cows in this festival alarms many animal activists and some dedicated Hindus. So it seems like the answer is kind of like it's it's perhaps was very sacred, but it's not really so much anymore. Like, it's definitely yeah. protected, partly. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's you know it's 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 kind of reflections on societies as a whole, kind of from a religious perspective. There's considerably less orthodox kind of um, individuals, and then kind of like a this lapsed people of that religion. So they still identify with it, but maybe some of these archaic um, rules and, and regulations are being less adhered to. Well, I mean that's just that's kind of like the rise of secularization, really. Isn't yeah, it? absolutely. That's what I mean. Like it, it's you know it's it's happening everywhere else. Why not in India? Well, that's that's something I often think to myself. This is happening everywhere. Why can't? Why not? It why in not in India? India? Yeah. Um, did you ever watch? How many, Goodness, li- how many listeners? Me? How many listeners do we have in India? Uh, I don't know. Could, do you I'm want gonna, to look up the stats? I'm gonna, I'm gonna find, is there I'm gonna anything find else out. in this article whilst you do that? Um, to be honest, this guy, uh, Asian Tom Scott, I now can't not see that. Um, is just a politician with a pretty badly written Wikipedia page. To be fair, which is more than we have because we don't have a Wikipedia page. Unlike not has yet. anyone. I mean, Sally LePage has one, uh, the which actually is quite well written and cited, and it has her signature on it, mm. despite the fact that I have ten times the views of her. But there we go. Four hundred and twenty-three. We have four hundred and twenty-three listeners in India. Mm. Email us for goodness sakes, guys. Get in touch. We want to hear from you. We want to hear mm. what state you're in. Uh, where you, also which state you live in in India. And um, tell us, uh, are cows sacred where you are? We're not trying to be racist. We're just trying to find out because we're confused. Mm. Uh, and Wikipedia is particularly clear. Uh, and as we know, Wikipedia is all the knowledge on the internet. And I don't want to Google any other links. And also, it encourages you to get involved with us, um, which is only a good thing. So I feel like we've actually done that article proud, you know? 
I feel oh, like absolutely. Tanvir has received a fair bit of attention. So we should probably uh, we, we 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 should mention the fact that we missed a week last week. Mm. Um, yes, we did. Because... Sorry, I should have sounded slightly more engaged there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we did. Um, uh, sounded like Hayden Christensen acting. Mm. Um, so I was in Exeter uh, were. for were some indeed. filming, and uh, it meant that, that meant that basically I couldn't record and I didn't have time to edit. He but was it... in Exeter, and the prick didn't even come and say hello. Well, that's not true at all because I stayed well, at Dad's it's, house. Yeah, it's absolutely not true. <laughs> but it would have been nice to labour under the impression that you didn't. Well, so should we? We should probably talk about the fact that we we went out. We went to a a, a, a house party. We went out in a big way. Uh, well, and funnily enough, we recorded us going out. We did. Um. So should we? I, I'm just going to get these recordings up. Should we? Should we listen to what we recorded? Mm. Uh, because I feel like the audience would. Would like to know what we what we got up to. Wikicast after dark. Oh my! Who who who's here? Hello, Daniel. It's, oh my! Hello, Simon. This is you 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 join you join us live. You might if you listen closely, you might hear the banter of of other folk and cars and many things. It's it's currently a Thursday. It's a Thursday evening. It's about eleven o'clock. Yeah, we're um we're we're heading back to we're heading yeah we're heading back to the ranch. Um the old the old faith. Uh, oh, faithful. Gosh, I'm gonna call the house. Well, I know. I, what's worse is I very nearly okay, gave no. away the address. So, truth be told, we don't know where we're going. No, we've just both been invited to a house party. Yeah, uh, because apparently that happens these days. That's the thing. Uh, That's what the cool kids do. And we don't know who these people are or where we're going. Not a clue. So we've just left. Uh, yeah, Dan just walked away from me. Hello. Uh, we've just we've just uh, walked away from the pub. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> what do you hope is going to happen tonight? Well, I imagine we're going to we're going to go home. Um, the reason that Simon's down here has been doing some recordings with Ex University. I have. Um, and exactly. how and how did they go? Uh, it was it was good. It was quite stressful. I was doing them all in one take. This may have already happened in the episode. I don't I don't know. We'll uh, see. But, uh, yeah, it went all right. And then I came to the pub and saw everyone. It was great. In fact, well, you can probably hear that singing right now. Well, there we go. So what's currently happening is we're we're going to head home as a tactical pit stop. <laughs> Um, we're then gonna we're gonna like touch base, maybe have maybe have some more drinks before we head to this house party. The, I mean, it's one of those it's one of those events. The reason I coaxed Simon into coming along is that I only found out today, and uh, eighty six people have invited and one hundred and one people have said no. Now, normally, normally these house parties uh, take places in houses with occupants. House normally parties take places in ha- houses. But, 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 PhD but, 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 Simon Clark. Houses everyone. typically have occupants ranging in the five to six kind of range they're not houses built for a hundred people no so this is the kind of the curious thing so either way whatever happens um i can absolutely promise that some some audio or possibly video evidence will uh, be provided just so so you're all aware of, of what's going on oh, i should put this in the discord okay let's, let's, right, so we'll get back to you later folks see you later like roving reporters <laughs> riveting reporting well i mean look at that gosh so I was I was a um, I was a chip a little f- wasn't I? Yeah, you were. You were right on my mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> just like oh, so that, just my the general excitement of heading off somewhere. You can hear in my voice. Normally, I'm fairly kind of quite quite calm, cool, collected, and we're like, oh, we're going to be going somewhere different. And for Dan, that's like catnip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was uh, yeah. So I was down in Exeter filming some videos uh, mm. for uh, postgraduate recruitment. That's what I was doing. Um, mm. And uh, I think like that's basically that that's basically brought people neatly up to date. You can hear the singing, the dulcet tones of Ed Dunn in the background. Mm. Uh, we were I distinctly remember walking along um, Pennsylvania, and uh, the people on the other side just looking because mm. there was the, half of the tenors in chapel choir just belting out. Um, was it a scribe unto the Lord? Probably either that or noble and be minor. No, because it was so to live unto righteousness. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Live. Is that a scribe or is that blessed? That's a scribe, isn't it? That is a scribe. Yeah. Um, so yes, very loudly singing, and then I think we have another clip um, for which I think is a bit later, which mm. we recorded um, at the at the house party. Maybe. To be honest, I can't remember. Oh well, let's let's find out together, shall we? Oh my goodness, we've arrived. Goodness me. We're here. This is the single What's best house party on? I've ever been at. We're under, we're under the stairs. Uh, we are. And, and can you describe the room we're in right we're now? Currently, I can't, well, we're, 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 we're subterranean. That's been established. Yes. It's very low light. Very um, low it's light. It's purely lit by, by fairy lights and, and something that's being played on a screen, Simon. Because I am, we are both in our respective nirvanas right now. Because Indeed, I we are. I am in my nirvana because right now the 2004 remaster of Star Wars A New Hope is 
is being projected on the screen. And I'm, I'm in my nirvana because the one, the only Hugo Wickham happens to be with us. Hello there. You are a bold uh, one. And it's just, oh. <laughs> It's 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 this is it's just all quite bizarre, isn't it? Also, we're we're all drinking from four packs, but we haven't been bothered to take the beers out of the four no. packs. We've just been opening them and drinking them as a four. More fittingly, there are far too many people for this house. Both I'm the sweating. state patrol and police, <laughs> I can inform, have been called, which yes. is why about five we minutes ago we were all told to get in the house and get underground. Literally, like this is this feels like a sixties. Well, like, do you remember that nuclear war discussion we had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're living it. Feels, it. Oh, it feels like a pro. Prohibition raid, or some kind or of from Fantastic or, Beasts, yeah, or something from like a Mad Men esque. <laughs> oh, you're smoking weed. That's not so good, eh, son? You better get out of there. Mm. Get out of there, see? Yeah. And let me just take a sip of this beer, see? You're good, kid. Real good. But as long as I'm around, you'll always be second best, see? We're and also, gonna... well, the thing is, I thought your Nirvana was because we're standing right next to this vacuum cleaner. I found a Hoover. I did find one, um, and it's. I didn't even have to go rooting through cupboards. There is just one there. It might be a Henry. I think it's a Henry hybrid. Oh. It's a hybrid. Uh, a, uh, a Henry. A Heinry. Yeah. Heinrich. Heinrich. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen for the rest no, of the night. It's a little bit better, to be honest with you. But are we going to keep you informed? Absolutely. Final words as we sign off. God save the Queen. God, God save always. the Queen. As always. <laughs> Lovely little trumpet solo at the end there. Yeah. So uh, that the, the, I, we can't emphasize enough how hot and crowded that basement was. It was ridiculous. It, um, it was very good fun, but mm. the police were called. It was a bit mm. ridiculous. Yeah. Also, yeah, I don't know why I was so fixated on the Hoover. For some... No, I don't. I think. I mean, I think it's fair to say that our our senses may have starting to be dulled at this point. Yeah, we were um, quite bevved. Yeah, we did have quite a bit, and that was that was early in the night. That, that was that was that was basically when we just arrived, and we stayed for a very very long time. Um, also, I think we. I, we I don't. What time did we leave? Because we got food, didn't we? Oh, I got food. You got you food. I think I got back home at about three. Yeah, so I would have been home at maybe half three, quarter to four. Yeah, it was a long. It was a very long queue in that yeah. shop. I I, I was though. waiting with you, and I was like, "Balls to this, I'm going home." Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, th- th- what that reminded me of is I don't think we have the audio of it at the moment. But you, um, what we pissed ourselves laughing at was Hugo in mm. the, the video. <laughs> the Absolutely. Fo- the following I'll send morning, those, I'll send those videos over to you as well. Um, we'll put that check. in in the, on the Patreon because that yeah. I, I'll edit that down. That was hilarious. So was funny. Really funny. Hugo just going hello, <laughs> <laughs> like like a seagull. Yeah. Um, Actually, if you're going to edit that through, I've been watching. Um, uh, I was watching the other day, uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, the extended edition, which is like three hours long, mm. um, which is amazing. But there's a moment where when Dobby is first revealed to be in Harry's uh, bedroom. Yeah. He oh, and he, and he the, says. The ca- it, yeah. The yeah. camera like whip pans around, and Dobby just goes, "Hello." And it's literally Hugo. It's exactly the same tone. So when I send this video over, you'll have to do like a side by side comparison of Dobby and Hugs. Um, it was it was very very funny. Okay, now uh, there is one more file that we can play for for the readers at home. Uh, mm, there which, is indeed. Which has the file name Simon Bev's late. Yeah. So I... unfortunately, I can't see when this was actually. Re- I can see the day, but I wonder if it would give me a time. No, it won't give me a time. That's just that's a shame. I have no idea what this contains, but should we give it a listen? Let's give it a listen. Hello, everyone. Oh, God. We find ourselves at the <laughs> tail end of the night. It's, it's well, it's actually not the tail end. It's it's about two a.m. It's about. I, I can tell you, it's seven minutes past two. Oh, I was pretty. I was nearly right. Very close. And things have gotten weird. Gotten is an Americanism. Things have got. Things have become. Things have become weird. Where are we, Daniel? Describe the scene in front of well, us. Well, much, much like when we checked in last. God, I've got a whiny little bitch voice, haven't I? Yeah. Well, Somewhat slurring. Um, we've been upstairs. We've been up... Oh, well, I've, I've been up to the next level. I've had some drinks. It's been quite fun. <laughs> yeah, we both, we've both been on the really? Yeah, we're we currently... Both dr- we drove drunk things that we probably shouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we've, we've all... We've both met people we probably shouldn't have met. Including our friend Hugo. Yeah. Who's just, just right. I'm only here because I lost my jacket. Um, there we go. And that's... Oh, there we go. Me. Where did you last see it? Oh, I don't know. That's why I've lost... <laughs> <laughs> um, I 
with a jacket on the back of it. Oh, no, that was the Never mind. That also, there's another chair with a jacket on it that's not my jacket, so it's very difficult. Hugo, how would you describe the scene that we see in front of us right now? We're trying to communicate to our readers quite what's happening. So basically, it's a lot of people at X University who think they're at Bristol University and that they're like all wavy and sh but actually not. Um, but in their pretense of being wavy and sh they've done all sorts of wavy sh that's not really that wavy. You want about you? They just got very <laughs> drunk and put on like things from the seventies on the projector. Ed Dunn is also here. Uh, we just did that just to clarify. That um, was what that interjection was. So okay. it makes an average party. It's pretty decent. Bit too packed for my liking, but it was a decent party. I rate eight out of ten on the Hugo scale. There um, are lava lamps. There are coloured lights. There was a projection of Star Wars happening earlier. It was and uh, that wait, made it it's, at least um, fifteen there's, times. There's a thing that you may not allow on the on the on the wiki cast, which is what quality entertainment. No, no, no. Uh, Think, is it allowed on the wiki cast or not? I don't know. You just say it, and we'll bleep it if it, necessary. It, it involves a. Uh, oh. No, the is not allowed. So that's not allowed. But there was a saxophone involved antics. So there was a cupboard door that kept on opening. And that And by that Ed Dunn means his anus. And there was Ed Dunn who was also not allowed on the wiki cast. <laughs> For very good reason. I just missed because of his dick entirely. His capacious anus. And on that bombshell. Which capacious to my anus. Your anus is very capacious. Simon and I will now have to sign off because we don't know what's going to happen next and we will have to go home soon. And, and frankly, I love you all. It's libelous, whatever happens we're next. All drunk. I love you all very, very much. Simon's nipples are massive. They're not massive, they massive? they're just prominent. Are they massive? We'll see you soon. <laughs> Goodbye. Are they massive? Oh, God. I forgot all about that. Yeah. That... Yeah, we were quite beved. You, you, you were yeah. definitely slurring somewhat. Oh, absolutely. But the thing was, we were quite beved, and that was at two, and I wouldn't have got. We didn't, you didn't get home till three. Yeah. And we didn't live far away. They lived around the corner, so we'd have stayed for longer. Which is when we did the videos of you choosing what to drink and. Yes, uh, well, that won't be in the podcast. We'll have to. I'll see if I can find a way of. Uh, uh, we could put it up as a Patreon exclusive. Yes. Uh, because that was that was a fun experience with Hugo interjecting. But yeah, there we Hilarious. go, listeners. That was our that was our, our little fun way of making up for not doing an episode last week. Mm. Uh, we did want to. We knew that we would be struggling for time, but we did want to give you at least something. So hopefully, yes, uh, that caused some humour. Some merriment. It certainly did for us. We had a great night. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, but that happened last week. What else is, is in our lives at the moment? What, what's happened to you recently? Well, I've been doing more and more planning with, excuse my singers. Well, Let's do the singers. Well, <laughs> Jesus, I've also been drinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> Exeter, Exeter University singers. Thank um, you. We're going to be go we're going to Rome uh, in a matter of weeks. Um, also, the chapel choir are going to France next f uh, a week tomorrow. Oh God, um, which is a little bit terrifying. Yeah. Which is kind of terrifying, really, especially given that I have to try and somehow sort out bringing all of my chapel stuff and my singer's stuff to France because singers fly out of Stansted two days after chapel get back and it's all just very close and a bit of a stress. So I've been doing all of those things. Um, we what else? What's been, I was there was stuff that I was going to say. Some some kind of vaguely exciting things have been happening, but I can't for the life of me remember what. I don't know. I mean, it's your life. Yeah. I, I was, what I was going to interject with was if you need to stay somewhere after uh, you go to Stansted, mm. I happen to know a place where you may be able to stay, and that's my new house with Pixel Curl. Yeah, well, that's the thing. So I know I definitely, I'll definitely want to be, be sleeping in a cupboard or perhaps a sofa um, uh, when I come up to Cambridge for these rehearsals with Homerton. Yes. Um, which will be very exciting. But equally, my current plan is to try and either get a lift back with somebody closer to Oxford Way or see the issue is I was going to go home for a bit because I haven't seen my fam in uh, in ages and that's a big weekend like a village fate that my mum has been planning um she's been on the kind of the committee think kind of classic English village stupid she'll be wandering around with a clipboard there'll be there's a soapbox race and a thing and there's a celebrity guest somewhere apparently or something oh. um but uh, anyway, uh, they're doing that and she's been putting quite a lot of work into it. So I'd, be, I'd really like to kind of go home and be there for that. Um, I've been, this, I actually showed you, I, these are the posters I was designing, remember? 
Oh yes, you um, showed. I remember I was, those. I, yeah, I was, a bit I was putting those two through because the the previous posters that have been done were um, were lacking. I'm going to say politely in in kind of any sense of artistic flair whatsoever. Yes. Um, yes, that, that's fair. But but the issue is, if I want to go back, the the easiest way to get across is by train because it means no one else has to. I don't have to get a lift with somebody in a car. So I have to. It's like a two and a half hour journey back to Oxford because I've got to go back into London and then out of London again. Oh yeah, it's the worst, isn't it's it? It's just so shit. Yeah. So depending on what happens there, and if I if I just completely fail and no, there's no trains or anything, I might just turn up. I send you a message <laughs> being like, I need somewhere to live. Um, well, I mean, the, the, you're well, always welcome here at Shea uh, Pixel Clark. I, I, we haven't actually got a name for the house yet. Clark Girl. Clark Girl, yeah, that's the one. That, that <laughs> doesn't doesn't make it sound like I own her. Love Boy and Clark Girl. <laughs> Love Boy and Clark Girl. Uh, so uh, yeah, that, that's that's um that's a big thing that's happened recently. Another mm. big thing though that's happened recently. There's just so much to talk about. That's not even mm. the biggest thing. Pixel Gar and I moving in together in a new house, and I actually just released a vlog about that this other uh, like an hour ago. Mm. Um, is I was the, watching it while we were waiting to record. Ah, right. uh, is that merch has arrived and people mm. have been getting it. And yeah, and we've been sending us things on Twitter and on, you know, like things in the Facebook group. It's been amazing. So far, there's only one person who hasn't got it yet, uh, who's emailed me as dutifully, as I said, at the end of the, uh, if by the end of the month they hadn't. Fingers crossed it'll still arrive because international orders are still arriving. Yeah. Um, but yes, it's all, all happening and people seem to be very happy. So I think we can call Operation Wikicast Merch a success. A success. And it could only have happened... Uh, thanks to our supporters on Patreon. This was something that we said that we always really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And by Jove, we've only gone and bloody done it. We've, we've we've got our own stuff out there, and people are wearing them, and it's amazing. And now we've got it. Now we now we've got to think about what we want to do next in terms of oh, maybe gosh. kind of a limited run of kind of of something else. Maybe some fan art things, or you know, yeah, could, I, you have, know I have some jumpers have some or hats ideas, yeah. or. You know, there's so many possibilities. Um, I mean, if you I, have any ideas, incidentally, uh, emails, other than yes. the amazing things that Simon and I come up with in our think tank, um, <laughs> email us, spongyelectric at gmail.com. Uh, if there's anything you'd particularly like to see, float it with us and uh, we'll get it done for you. The, only, the, well, I, the person I thought you were going to thank, uh, who definitely deserves thanks, is my beautiful mother. Oh my God, yeah. Who, whilst I was away, uh, I was Mom up lad. north doing some filming, and she took all the t- she took delivery of the t-shirts. There was like 180 or whatever it was of them, folded all of them, put them into categories, and then helped me with the packing. So every single t-shirt order was lovingly hand packed by me and my mum, and she hand wrote all of the labels. I bought labels that we could print on, but she was mm. worried that it would it might not work. So whilst I was away, she hand wrote all the labels. Wow! Uh, so she's an absolute babe. We couldn't she have done is it a saint. without her. Um, so round of applause in the Twitch chat, please, for, for my mum. She's absolute babe. Um, and also, yeah, and uh, her and dad have also helped me uh, and Pixel Girl move in. So they've been really killing it at the moment. Recently. How's that been going? Uh, well, we're basically moved in. I'm speaking to you from our new office uh, in in my in the house. Uh, we actually got internet all of like six, seven hours ago. Uh, it arrived this morning. So and we're now- already reaping the rewards. We are. The, there's no lag really anymore, which is amazing. It's so fast compared to the West Country. It's so great, which means that now I can actually stream in decent quality. So when things are, have settled down a bit, and this month is quite busy, and I realise that I'm doing past paper stuff, which is becoming increasingly less, less, increasingly less relevant because of you know people actually doing their exams, I will actually be able to stream in decent quality. So. Mm. That's a go. But um, yeah, um, office is set up, bedroom set up, kitchen set up, living room is kind of there, but we still need to get a sofa bed um, and we don't have a TV or anything like that. Uh, we're, we're pretty bare bones at the moment, but it's, it's you know, gone pretty smoothly, really. Mm. We haven't had any arguments yet. Uh, Pixel Girl, it's got to be said, um, built a IKEA um, chest of drawers all by herself, um, which was meant to Strong. be a two person job. Uh, I know I can sympathize with her. Oh yeah, you uh, did I, that with the I, table. When I first moved in, yeah, before before Simon moved in, there was a period of about three weeks where I was just in kind of in here on my own, getting stuff kind of sorted, and I saved the larger jobs, or mainly the furniture that you were going to be using. Mm. Um, uh, I saved it until we could kind of have an on mass building session together, which was hilarious, and we probably shouldn't have been drinking at the same time. Remember, you put the ha- we put the handles on the cupboard back. No, 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 that that wasn't me. That was our friends Michael and Tom. It because was. That's we wrote true. these two guys, and there was four of us, and we split into two teams in two different rooms. And we both had beers, and it was like meant to be quite a chill thing. And there mm. was so much aggression and yeah. sweatiness. And I remember Michael and Tom had done 
the um wardrobe in my room and mm. they there was a lot of like hammer use there was a lot of banging going on and yeah. they i remember they knocked on the door of ours and they were like do you want to come and see your new wardrobe and i was like oh thank you guys i went over and they done the handles backwards everything so you else was really perfect. open the thing because yeah, they're, so, they're both folded into each other yeah i like said to michael I was like, oh fantastic can you open it for me so i can have a look and he went to open it got within about six in- his hands got within about six inches of the handles and it just went oh f-. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny like i wanted was... to keep them like that as well but your dad fixed it yeah he did that was like no come on let's let's be sensible we uh-huh. did i mean i, I built the, the table that for, for for viewers who can perhaps remember when we used to film stuff in our front room mm. um the table that would be in the corner is actually kind of a, an extendable table um so they basically it means it's a ball ache to try and to try and build and i it, it was ikea instructions have a amazing way of pissing you off by handily and all the kind of the pictures of what to do involve two people and i'm just one and i remember at one point it took me about half a day to build this thing um and I was maybe about 45% of the way through building it. And as I was cutting over things open, I just kind of slashed my hand open with a Stanley knife out of frustration. <laughs> Immediately kind of bound it with um, with cable ties and kitchen roll because I didn't have any, I just moved in, I didn't have any kind of plasters or bandages. I immediately called my parents and was asking them about how their day was going. And they were like, oh, you sound quite frustrated. I'm like, yeah, I'm going on a stress walk. And I left the house for like an hour just to... <laughs> to D because I knew if I, you know, something, a hammer would end up going through a window if I continued. But yeah, you were, she's, you Pixel like, Girl is a hero. It's a, it's really annoying trying to build things on your own. You were like sweating in frustration. I remember oh, you were like the angriest. Absolutely. But... And then I made a point of saying like when you first came in, we had our first pasta meal and I was like, oh, we could sit on the table, couldn't we? That wasn't a question. It was like, we are sitting on this f-ing table. It's the one time really we've used it <laughs> except when Sally came over and we had like a bigger dinner. Yeah. Um, I mean, if usually if there's if there's if it's more than kind of me or you or me and Ed now um, having having food, the more clear this one and extend it, and you can get about six people around it, um, which is quite nice. Um, but otherwise, it just kind of sits there and is a is a dumping ground for for stuff. So yes, yeah, so she she overcame significant hardships in getting that built, and uh, we, we Round built applause. we we built a, uh, a wardrobe together, which we didn't have a single argument with. That was absolutely fine. Um, and yeah, overall, it's going. Um, I, I've got to say, it's going pretty perfectly, really. Uh, You've like, got your mattress back. Yes, uh, I've yet to actually disinfect it properly after Ed used mm. it for a, a year. Yeah. But mm. um, yeah, it's you know that, that that's the only downside: possible lice infestation. Mm. Uh, because he, well, he currently. I mean, he still doesn't have a mattress. So what he's he's done now <laughs> is a, as an accumulation of kind of clothes different rugs that we have pillows from around the house he's basically turned one corner of his room into a nest um and he curls up in that at night and sleeps there and it's all a bit like ed's room Mm. ed's room it's got to be said it's like the thing that got me was when i looked over and and he has some kind of bullshit rug it's like an arctic fox fur rug or something oh yeah And, and it's just covered in in chocolate biscuits yeah in chocolate biscuit crumbs and it, it's just like, what? The, that, mm. the combination of, of, of textures, uh, everything about it is just so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you've got that image and then you've got the floor strewn with clothes. It's like ankle deep in used clothes. There are baking trays in there for some reason. Yeah. Um, it, I just close the door. I clean the house semi-regularly, as, as no one will be surprised at at all. And whenever I get upset, I'll be hoovering and I'll just pull his door closed. And it literally is out of sight, out of mind. I close it. It's like, it's not there. It's fine. It's all right. <laughs> I don't need to go in. Um, it's just, yeah. But I, that, yeah. So the, the, we've, I've rescued my mattress from that environment, like mm. a, like rescuing an animal that's been abused. And yeah, um, yeah it's, the, it's going to a good home. Yes, it, it has. This is, a, this is a good home. And hopefully you'll see when you visit. Because um, we actually had our friend uh, Lily D. Raper, um, mm. uh, official name, uh, come and visit the other day. We had a barbecue. It was very nice. And nice. Um, yeah, no, it's all, it's all, I feel very adulty. Like I said in that, in that video that I just put up, I feel very much like an adult at the moment. Mm. Um, so we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah. Um, but is there, is there anything else I feel like? We've been rambling in this section for quite a while. Is there anything else you'd like I to I don't think there's add? anything else to kind of touch base on. I feel like we can probably move on to um, 
the Critics. other other segment that I've forgotten the name of. It's been too long. What's the it's one? Been a, we've only missed Critics a Critics Corner. Now. Critics, that's the one. Right, let's let's hop and skip over to Critics Corner. We We <laughs> oh, really, 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 really. Get out Get of out here. of here. <laughs> have you seen their Doki Doki Literature Club play free? I don't think Oh yes I have, yes I have. The potatoes? Yeah, but the, pota- the potatoes yeah. fall out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I got my potatoes. <laughs> and then when they discover that it's a horror game, and it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Uh, so we are. We're in- back. We're back. Oh, we're we're, we're back to radio now, apparently. Right. Um, cool. We're in Critics Corner. What, what would you apparently. like to criticize, Dan? Well, I have been watching many things. I finally got round to watching Churchill. No, oh, that's the, a lie. The one I finally with got round to watching Darkest Hour. Yes, that one. That's the, yeah, it's really f-ing good. I, um, I don't know about that. Well, have you seen Churchill? The one with um, Brian Cox? The, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. The one with, the one that was released basically at the same time, but the, it was an American actor playing Churchill. He did a good job, but the film was considerably better. Dark, I, uh, Darkest Hour was better than Churchill. I didn't, I didn't think Darkest Hour was great. I thought, I thought Gary Oldman was fantastic in yeah. that. But like, I didn't think the film itself was really any good. I quite liked it. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, I think it just didn't hang together as a film for me. Like, okay. possibly it was overhyped as the other thing. Mm, true, true. There was a there was a big hoo ha about it. Uh, uh, we then watched back to back. We watched Darkest Hour and then uh, rewatched Dunkirk. Oh, um, on our massive, sillyly large screen, and Ed hasn't seen it. What? Uh, oh, Ed, okay. What did Ed he make? Ed hadn't seen. It? Ed hadn't seen Dunkirk, so that was really, really quite pleasant. Pixel Girl and I went to see um, Deadpool 2, mm-hmm. which, have you seen it? No. It's um, it's pretty similar to the original uh, in its sense of humour and how effective it is. It's not yeah. as funny, I don't think, possibly just because it's not new and fresh. And you know, groundbreaking. It's, it's, it's anyway, not yeah. as shocking. Um, but it's still very entertaining. It doesn't, the first sort of third or so, first third, two thirds, doesn't really hang together. Right. But it's, it's, it's very good. We both really enjoyed watching it. Also very violent. Mm. Like, I know that's, that sounds like a silly thing to say, but it's very violent. Yeah. So yeah, that, that, that was um, definitely, I'd recommend going to see it um, if, if at all possible. I still haven't seen Solo, you know. Nor have I. Which is like, and we're two pretty big Star Wars fans, really, but just don't really care. Like, I, I did, yeah, I just, I just don't particularly care about it, you know. Mm. I think I've, I've, I heard Kermode's review of it, right? Um, and he, I think he was kind of like, yeah, it's all, it's all right. It's not. I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's very hard to say anything about it because I haven't seen it yet. So, and I've, I've, li- I've watched basically nothing. Um, I rewatched the full release tra- well, the full trailer for um, Mortal Engines. Oh, now came I came out I, yesterday. I saw a new... snippet of of that. Yeah, it looks they had a teaser trailer released like a year ago, and yeah. now the full trailer was released yesterday, and it looks quite cool. Yeah, I, I like because it's Peter Jackson, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it certainly looks. Is it originally a manga or an anime? Um. I don't know. It's, it's it, definitely, it's definitely, it's a novel of some form. Like it, it, it looks kind form. of almost like Howl's Moving Flying Castle kind of thing. Mm. Um, um, hang on, let's look. Oh, it's um, based on a series of novels. There you go. Yeah, I thought by, so. Um, oh, oh God, I've, I've lost it. Uh, by Philip Reeve. Mm. Yeah. Indeed. I mean, it sounds, I mean, the, the one sentence summary, the film is set in a post-apocalyptic steampunk world where entire cities have been mounted on wheels and motorized and prey on one another. That yeah. sounds so interesting. It's a, it's a, it's going to be a hell of a spectacle. Yeah. Can, I mean, you can tell that in the, in the trailer. Also, I watched the trailer for the Lego movie two. Oh, I didn't know that was out. Which looks amazing. It's, de- it's a such a, the Lego movie is such a brilliant film anyway. Yeah. I agree. Um, and then also, uh, I rewatched the trailer for Incredibles two, which I'm quite excited about, mm-hmm. um, just because it's been so long. Um, and oh, there was something else, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, Wreck It Ralph two, Ralph wrecks the internet or something. I saw the bit with the princesses, mm. uh, but that's it. I ha- I still haven't seen the original of that actually. Oh, uh, well, the original it's good. It is good. 
Um, um, I quite like it. Yeah, and no, I haven't been. Um, well, obviously, we actually haven't had internet for very long, so I've actually almost completely not had any any consumption or TB. Um, it's it's been a very a dry spell, apart from going to see Deadpool two for me. Um, I, I literally, pfft, what else have I been doing? I don't even know. I've, I'm I'm reading the Good Immigrant, which I think I mentioned before. Um, mm-hmm. I'm still reading that. I finished Legion by Dan Abner, which was an excellent book. Um, one of my favorite forty k novels, actually. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's been pretty slim pickings. Other, other yeah. than I have been re uh, ca- finishing off. My dad wrote a porno, the podcast. Um, Very strong. The last few episodes, including the episode "Cockadoodle Flu" and "Butch the Sunburnt Kid." Um, if if any of our readers don't listen to it, I I highly highly recommend my dad wrote a porno it's a ridiculous premise that's like it's not even porn it's that bad that's that's mm. that's the way to think about it is don't feel smutty about it because it doesn't even really count as porn yeah um but yeah i i, I, I don't know i haven't got a huge amount to a visual media to criticize mm. i suppose i could talk about my ted talk that i gave which was about visual media oh yeah i remember you talking about that um, which was, you know, talking about the Blair Witch effect and uh, how, you know, we perceive online video differently because we create online video on the, using the same websites and the same formats. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's that's been a, that's about it for me. It's, uh, mm. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't think there's been anything else that's been particularly kind of. Oh, yeah. So my, I've mentioned before, um, I am now absolutely 110% completely obsessed with sorted food. Oh, Ed has been watching that too. I watched a good yeah. few videos when I was down. Yeah, they are brilliant. I want to do stuff with them. I want to meet them. I want to interview Ben Eberall. Um, I want like he's the he's one of the actual chefs, the dark haired one. He wears, one wears the black chef's. Um, jacket oh, oh yeah, 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 he's hilarious. And I I think we've I mean we've basically had their stuff playing for the past week on repeat. Um, whenever we're in the house, and they're brilliant. And uh, I, I definitely yeah. that they, they are relatively more produced than other youtube conglomerates that we watch. absolutely they they're, they're the sorted uh company is huge i went onto their website and they have so much the youtube thing is like a thing they do on the side yeah um they they have like their own podcast like you've got to subscribe you subscribe to them as like as a like as digital member or as a physical member um and they send you like different cookbooks every couple of months you get to be part of the podcast you get to they might be start to they might be doing like food boxes in the future oh, they wow. might, like this thing is huge um they've nailed it really in terms of a kind of like a market, marketing like strategy kind of thing yeah i mean like i mean it's certainly that <clears throat> it's a different way of approaching making online content um it, it, uh, because most people as i talk about in the talk actually um you know they approach it as i am watching this as an individual making a product not i am watching a product first and foremost which is what they have gone for they've put the the product first and it's a different way of doing things it's not worse or or better um it's just uh, it's interesting that it that it stands out from a lot of other creators like for example the Yogg's cast um mm you know uh in the way that they've done it uh, but i was i was impressed by what i'd seen the, the the um the production value reminded me a little bit of like a food food based top gear yeah 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 no i, I would recommend as well actually i'm um, i haven't talked about that before but um it's not i'm not subscribed to them i think it would take a bit more I, I, it was something special would have to happen for me for me to subscribe to them but i thought they were a pretty solid channel yeah no i'm i'm fully i'm fully in fully hooked they're they're awesome well, if that's all we have to talk about, should we not linger here? I feel like we should thank mm. our patrons, and then we have a double crisis corner. Yeah, let's do it. Ooh. Top lad. And we find ourselves in Patreon corner. Um, this is the the part of the show where we'd like to thank um, thank those who, uh, who who keep this podcast running. Basically, we did allude to earlier in the in the podcast um, that without your support, we wouldn't have been able to have the amazing success with the merch that we have had. Mm. Um, now, normally, we do uh, a kind of a, a really well planned, scripted. Um, comedy skit as we do this <laughs> that we definitely don't just make up on the spot uh, given that we're we are we're a bit little, little kind of press time today we do we also want to give a longer episode and we're going to be doing two crises and basically answering more of your questions than we would do normally because we've missed out on previous weeks did you just we're say crises go... crises you definitely crises. said crises yeah I mean, as you were i meant i meant crises <laughs> Um, we're going to do two of those. Um, so to make up for that, we're going to go back to vanilla Wikicast, where we're just going to read out names, um, and we're going to have to we're going to skip the skit um, for, for for this week. Skip um, the skit. 
skip this kit. So without further ado, we'd like to say a massive thank you to uh, Marut Vakiapunyawat, Azagu Nagapan Nagasaravanan, Fee Gascoigne, Simon Vase, Henry Brewster, Davi Shram Vontabel, Lewis Watson, Tapio Kirkinen, Lovely. Eric Davis. Wonderful Stephen. Billy Toulson. Kieran Kelly. Elliot Conway. Angela. Ben McMurty. Jay Wright. David Scahill. Emma Kavanagh. The Moustache Man. Matt McGuire. Habiba Amjad. Miles Kornfeld. Dan Hanvey. Geordie Eschendahl. Lachlan Woods. Alex Greer. John Mannion. Simon Torseth. Nick Webster. And Luke Thatcher. Thank you so much for your support, everyone. Um, it means so much. As I say, like we said earlier, the, the kind of the merchandise thing has kind of overwhelmed certainly kind of Simon and me. We never realised that, you know, what started as kind of like, oh, this would be a funny thing, actually completely like took off, completely off the ground. And mm. it's been a rip roaring success. Also, thank you so much for those who've been contacting us on Twitter or using the hashtag uh, Wikicast um, to show us that you've got your stuff and putting your stickers wherever you choose to shove them as ever dan hanvey completely outdid everyone it's gonna be incredible sad. incredible man, that man um, but yeah if when if, if you're if you've got yours and you and you haven't kind of sent us a message or something you can either use the the kind of the the, the facebook group that we've got the community tab on our patreon it's a really lovely place um or on twitter and um, just tweet one of us uh, or or both uh, with the, the hashtag wikicast also we'll to it. address the uh what um hacking ruddy george said uh mm. on on twitter I deliberately didn't include the cuts in my eyebrows because it looked dumb, but I'm glad that you customised yours to have them. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> so, um, yes, thank you so much. And then the other thing to quickly update you on is the ongoing Team Dog versus Team Cat uh, balance, as all things oh, yeah. should be. I completely forgot about that. Um, I closed the tab, so you're going to have to tell me what's going on. Team Cat are on 30 patrons. Mm-hmm. And team Dog are on 31 patrons. Oh, my goodness. It's so... Thanos would be disappointed. Oh, well done, everyone. I'm so proud of you. So, I said that we'd do it. Slow and steady wins the race. I mean, I mean that, of course, in the sense that I'm not trying to suggest that Thanos is a cat person. He might be. Mm. I don't know. But uh, it's not balanced as all things should be. So one person's vote, one person's dollar a month on patreon.com forward slash the Wikicast can make all the difference in balancing the books, quite literally. Uh, mm. So do if you if you like the podcast, and you'd like to support us by the cost of a can of pop a month, then... Do put that mm. in. It it helps us donate to Wikipedia every month. We put twenty pounds across to the Wikimedia Foundation, keeps the servers going for the podcast, and it allows us to invest in things like the merchandise and possibly in the future some artwork, which is we have some ideas anyway. Mm. So uh, yes, ooh, that that's ooh. thank you, thank you so much for your support, guys, and uh, we will let you know of what we're going to be doing with that Patreon money in the future. <laughs> Top lot. So we find ourselves now in Crisis Corner, uh, where we said last week we were going to be doing two. So I'm going to choose one. Uh, Simon's going to choose one. Again, they will always remain anonymous, but we're going to kick off uh, with an email from Anonymous um, uh, titled Crisis Corner. They say, Dear Simon the Doctor and Dan the Dog Whisperer. Hello. <laughs> First time writer here. I really appreciate all your advice on Crisis Corner, and I've been loving your podcast, so I decided I might ask for your perspective. I'm from Nicar- Nicaragua. And I've been studying a master's degree in Barcelona for a year now. It's been really exciting and challenging so far. My parents are currently living in Nicaragua uh, and they have tickets to come and visit me next summer. However, right now, Nicaragua is facing a social and political crisis that's not likely to stop anytime soon. And it's possible that my parents might not come. I really want them to come visit because I miss them so much. uh, And I'm having a hard time trying to accept that there's nothing we can do about it. Um, but wait. Uh, also, I'm worried about my friends and family because there's been a lot of violence these days. How do I cope with not being able to do anything about it and accepting the reality that I don't know when I'm going to be able to see my parents again? Thanks for reading my email and I hope you both succeed in your goals. Also, hashtag Team Cat forever and ever. Okay, so studying abroad mm. and they're living, uh, your parents are still at home. Yep, and, and uh, this person's in Barcelona and they've been there for a year. And the parents might not be able to come. And basically, how do you deal with not being able to do mm. anything about it and also you know you're worried for them um obviously that's a very very unfortunate situation i mean I, I, first of all i hope that your parents and your friends and family are, are okay because uh mm. i have heard that nicaragua is not a good place to be at the moment um at all um i mean the fact that you can't do anything about it i mean Practically, can you do anything to ameliorate the situation short of getting them out of the country? I feel like the answer is almost certainly no. Mm. You know. Um, so, you they know. have 
tickets to come and visit me next summer this person says so you i mean i think it would also it would it's always good to kind of think positive and go you know with these this the this kind of um uh social and political crisis uh may be not not necessarily resolved but alleviated so travel restrictions may be slightly more lax um i mean i i kind of i can sympathize with not being able to see friends um family and kind of friends from home uh when i was in australia because obviously my family and friends back with my family were um on the other side of the world so i wouldn't get to see them very often at all probably maybe once or twice a year um at at, at christmas or or in the summer um i think it's important to stay positive and 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 hope that these kind of restrictions will be lifted um this all i mean it's not the same as uh as seeing them in person but maybe given that your parents are in the country where that where the kind of the the unfortunate circumstances are taking place maybe more kind of contact with them um with kind of phone calls or emails and things to get an idea of what's actually happening on the ground if you'll kind of understand the, the kind of expression there mm. um they might be able to inform a bit more as to kind of what's going on and and kind of maybe realize the restrictions a little easier than you can which would probably save you some stress uh, because it's actually coming from people who are in the country rather than maybe what you're hearing in the news or what you're reading online um We'll keep our fingers crossed. Whether that makes any difference at all, I, I doubt it. But, but we'll do. A, we'll yeah, do a... I, I feel like basically that's the best you can do. The fact that if mm. you if you you can console yourself by saying, "Look, I can't change anything about the situation. The best I can do is hope." Um, and if you're religiously inclined, you can pray. Um, but you know, you can't. You, you can't let something like that negatively affect your life. I feel like you had to ask yourself, what if if you, you were going through a difficult time, what would you want your friends and family to be able to do if there was no way of them extricating you? You know, that you mm. would want them to be thinking about you, be hoping things go well, but you wouldn't want your situation to be making them sad. You would want them to get on with their lives and do the best that they can under the circumstances. So I feel like the best way that you can... Um, overcome this is by trying to live the the life that your parents would want you to be living mm. so you know trying obviously you're going to be concerned obviously you know you, you care about these people a great deal you want them to be safe and happy um but they would want you to you know be, be thinking about them but yeah just to, to be carrying on with your studies to be focusing on why you're there um that doesn't mean to, to say that you should be callous or sort of thoughtless about it. You know, I think it's possible to be carrying on as you were and still have them in your thoughts, mm. um, but not let them, you know, not not let that change the life that you're living for the for the worst, yeah. if that makes sense. It's a tough one. I think, yeah, what makes it so hard is that as you, as you kind of identify in the email, there's nothing you can do. It is to kind of to all intents and purposes, it's out of your hands. So... Um, I think the advice that we're kind of really giving is to step back and look at the things that you can control and the things that will make things easier for you, like talking to your parents more regularly to get an idea of what's actually happening politically and socially, mm-hmm. rather than just hearing things online. Um, there's some time to, you know, next summer, there's, you know, it's it's going to be really inconvenient and not fun to not see your parents. But I imagine from a country perspective, a social and political crisis is something that they want to avoid. So they'll be doing absolutely everything to, to reach some kind of um, understanding. I'd actually, I'd actually don't know what's going on in Nicaragua at the moment. Um, I should probably do some reading and see, see what, see what's happening. But, but, um, I think it's because oh, Guatemala is having a, these huge volcanic eruptions. and There's been two now. I think mm. Nicaragua is, it's just sort of, it, well, I say just it's social unrest, you know, it's, mm. um, um it's sort of a desire for a regime change um i'll have a quick uh nicaragua let's, have, let's educate ourselves and those of you at home who are who don't know about the situation um oh wow it's actually yeah, i've just seen i've just seen yeah very very rapidly i see more it's than, a, it's an uprising against more than the 120 government. people have been killed in nicaragua since the 19th of april in what has become a popular uprising against the central american country's president uh daniel ortega and his government um, and then that's a quite useful BBC article here about explaining what's going on and what caused it to happen. Yeah, I'm on it. Yeah. So basically, there's the people protesting, uh, most of the university students, it seems, um, mm. uh, who want the president to step down. Uh, president's on his third consecutive term in office. Um, and wow. Yeah. Catholic Church and the business sector have also joined in calls for early elections. Wow. Apparently, the government has described the court demands of the protesters as the blueprint for a coup. Um 
And basically, it does look like the government's clamping down and it's using lethal strategy and it's, you know, trying to hold on to power when it seems that the people doesn't want, you know, the, the, the people don't want the government to be in power. So uh, obviously a very bad situation, uh, Anonymous. And uh, certainly I'll be thinking of, of your parents and your your friends and family. Um, and mm. I, I feel like if you know that you can't change the situation be aware of it. Think about your think about your friends and family. Just try and live the best life that you can in Barcelona. And um, you know, when you go back home, try and be as best equipped as you can, which means being healthy and um, you know, taking care of yourself and being well qualified and you know, being a version of you that your parents and, and friends and family will be proud of. Mm. But that is that is a heavy situation. Um, the, we, we, now we were going to do another crisis would you be up for another crisis Dan? absolutely can we Let's handle another crisis this is tending towards what Sally LePage wanted of us just doing crisis corner Mm. Um, so let's have a quick look in our inbox and so we have a second crisis then from Anonymous poor Anonymous a lot of stuff happens to them uh, yeah. reads Dear Sarkandor I'm in year 12 and I've started looking at university options. However, there's one thing that's worrying me about starting university. I'm What's not... happening to him, sorry? They're worried. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, I'm not a big fan of drinking, and it seems like alcohol is a massive part of student life. I'm wondering if alcohol really is as big a deal as it seems. If so, would you say there's a lot of pressure to drink, and how easy is it to avoid? Because maybe it's just my sixth form, but there doesn't really seem to be a space between completely sober and does infinite rounds of shots and passes out for two days, binge drinking. It's just been on my mind a lot because I'm worried about being left out or seen as boring if I don't want to take part in drinking culture. Or is the alcoholic student just a stereotype? So long, and thanks for all the non-content. Anonymous. So, I felt like this was an appropriate one to talk about, given our escapades... Uh, mm, in Exeter, absolutely, uh, because we we do drink, um, and we we have been known to do so to excess. But mm, um, I, I feel like that there isn't a dichotomy between completely sober and completely rat assed. There is a whole no. spectrum uh, that's available. Yeah. I mean, do, do you want to weigh in with this? Sorry, Dan, I've been talking. I think for a while. no, no. That's I would. So I think that it's it's very kind of observant of you to kind of notice that this this kind of drinking as a culture certainly university and in your final year at school um does become does kind of reach a forefront i think the drinking to excess and the as you say the does infinite rounds of shots and passes out for two days binge drinking was certainly a common thing that i noticed as you're approaching the end of uh, end of school um because it's a it's a kind of a build-up of excitement and you're nearly done and certainly in the weeks afterwards in australia there's a um it's kind of like a cultural tradition when you finish called schoolies um where you you go away for one or two weeks and um just you drink for two weeks basically you usually go to the beach somewhere or you get a house with friends and it's um depending on where you go it can be a really amazing time like i had or people die um to put it bluntly um it's a really it's a kind of a really dangerous thing what i've noticed at university is that i would say that you're definitely because you're in a more kind of adult environment and you're in a more mature environment in terms of your, you may only be a first year, but you're often in a place where you've got, you know, second, third and fourth years around as well. Um, drinking is more prevalent, but I don't think it carries the stereotype of does infinite rounds of shots and passes out for two days. For instance, my typical week will be um, if I finish um something on campus like if it's if it's a if it's a chapel choir thing or you know it's tradition in actually university singers that on a th- on a wednesday night after rehearsal you you go to the pub and you have maybe some dinner and some food there or maybe after you know after a chapel rehearsal we usually go to the pub as well and it's less because that's where you go to drink it's that it's that's the that's a social place to be it's enough where you can get enough people around one table without having to squeeze into somebody's house or if it's bad weather you can't sit outside there's plenty of people that i know in ex university singers and in the chapel choir who who will come with us and don't want to drink they don't feel that they have to they don't feel obliged to and that's the most important thing you'll be in a group of people or at least you, you would hope to be in a group of people that don't see that as a necessity um uh, this is something that i think that you'll discover for yourself when you're at university um and you and you make your kind of new group of friends and you see how that goes um 
as a whole, though, the alcoholic student stereotype, I don't think really exists. There's definitely what you hear in the news and what makes kind of big stories are these maybe societies like like the rugby society or yeah. the cricket society, where when they do out, when they go out on a social, they do go just, you know, sillily large. You know, well, I, um, I feel like there is truth to the stereotype, but it's not as as in those people definitely exist. Or the, the stories that you have in your head as a sixth former of uni parties, those are very real. And mm. they are widespread, but that's not everyone. I feel like that's probably a, a, a sizable percentage, but definitely like less than a third of the student population. Let's put it like that. Yeah, like, it's because, again, it's what you hear, you know, in kind of amazing news outlets like The Tab, mm. which is just an absolute joke of a publication. Um, but anything that you hear in the news about kind of students, these student part, these wild student parties, they always talk, they always kind of document and talk about the extremes in the situation. But from like a, you know, for a kind of, I consider myself a fairly normal average student, as I say, most of, you know, most of my friends are, I'm not tied into one kind of massive society that has a, has a kind of a stereotype with, with, with this. But I mean, also, it's, it's worth pointing out that at least at Exeter, if you are producing, sorry, um, like putting on an event as part of your society, you have to have a non-drinking option. Yeah, it's, I mean, the, yeah, option. guild, the guild, the student guild have uh, like regulate events so heavily. Um, you, you know, you've got to be super careful and put forward all your proposals. And if anything goes awry, then you can get into massive trouble hmm. um, with, with how those things go. I, you know, like you'd be, I'd be lying if I said that the vast majority of students obviously kind of like do drink and when they go on a night out they have a good night out and and some of that i think is down to that that kind of like that student life mm. you know even you know when you've got f- parents and friends of parents and they talk about their university days it, they there is usually some anecdote with oh we had a really heavy night one time and that was a thing um i think that's a lot to do with the age of the person as well not necessarily the, pl- the place that they're at and and you can have that them being in a kind of locality of uni it's just it's something that happens but it's not an absolute like necessity and certainly i you know there's times where i'll go to the pub with with singers or chapel or whatever and we'll have a pepsi yeah because i want a pepsi there's no you know there's no obligation it's yeah it's 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 very much dependent i think on the group that you're with and you sound like a person that would like to be with people who respect that so you know you'll you'll find people like that yeah i i i feel like no matter who you are, when you go to uni, you will gravitate, you will find people and gravitate towards people who are like you in, in mm. whatever sense that means. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, you will find a group of people that don't want to drink. In, in fact, there was a petition. I don't think it actually happened in the end. There was a petition for a non-drinking society at Exeter, as in it was called the non-drinking society. Um, mm. as, and, you know, there were there are plenty of people who share this concern, uh, both before uni and at uni. I think I think there are several people who are just like, I don't want to drink. You know, and that's just a thing. They they just it's so, it's, want to do it. It's, it's funny you should mention that. When I in my first year, um, Ed Dunn, my current housemate, we actually were kind of we we met. Well, we didn't f- meet in person, but we'd been talking uh, for like months and months before Freshers' Week about our kind of interest in music, and you know, we were fairly kind of um, we got along quite well. Um, and one of the ideas that we had was Freshers' Week is something that is so heavily based around, or we it came across to us as buying all the tickets you can and all the wristbands you can for all the amazing nights out that they do. And I would say, if I was to give any advice, um, the vast majority of everything that is sold as a freshers event is a complete waste of time and you will be, you won't, it's so oversubscribed and it's, there's too many people. It's not really done that great. Um, I, 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 it's not worth it. I, did I go out in my, my first week? Absolutely. I did, but we met up with friends that we were talking about some kind of similar music tastes and things and we'd go to a pub and then we'd find a club to go to and we'd just go as normals rather than the part of yeah. this kind of freshers thing and we actually made a facebook group called exeter pub rapscallions i think which still exists and by, <laughs> by the time of by the time of the week of 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 freshers week there were like 250 people in there and it was all people who just said you know what, i want to have a good time in freshers week but i also don't want to go clubbing every day that'd be really nice just to go and meet people and and have some food or have a drink an, an alcoholic one or or not and just you know, meet people that way and sit sit in kind of a, like a nice pub, which the Southwest is around for. We're really lucky to have lovely r- rural, mm-hmm. nice pubs and them in abundance. Um, look for things like that, you know, especially when, before you start, everyone's so conscious of kind of fitting in. Um, it's very, it'd be, you know, 
I absolutely think that the decision to kind of go just if, just out of curiosity is anyone else also not massively keen on clubbing every day and kind of wasting their week and it just being a kind of a boozy haze because I didn't want to do that. Mm. Um, I also had a <laughs> choirs to audition for, so I needed a voice. Um, but yeah, it's you know it, it it's what it's kind of what you make it and who you meet and there's I don't think you should worry about feeling that oh if if uni is going to happen then this is going to impact my life in such and such a way. Yeah, you I, have you have absolute control. I feel I feel like to answer your question anonymous directly, is there a lot of pressure to drink and how easy is it to avoid? There is if there are there is a lot of pressure to drink in very small sections of student society. It's yeah. very easy to avoid if you don't want to drink. No, I, there are very few societies. I think basically a lot of the sports societies will probably force you to drink. But most societies, it won't be a requirement. And, you know, in a way, actually, it's if you go to an event and they say, uh, oh, no, you have to drink, down it fresh. If you're going to come with this, you've got to drink. Then that just tells you that you shouldn't be hanging around with these people anyway. Yeah. So yes, it's ultimately what should dictate it the most is if you'll meet people in Freshers Week who are your friends, whether you were at university or not. If you were with your friends at home and you go, actually, you know what? This is something I'd like to do. I'd like to go out for a drink with them, or oh yeah, I'll come out, but you know, I probably won't have too much or whatever. Again, it's completely in your control. Um, don't uh, don't worry. Yeah. So it's going to be okay, anonymous. Don't worry. Don't you're not. Don't be have to be right. a pissed as a rat at university. If you want to, yeah. it's great. Everyone, please drink responsibly. But yeah, it's up to you. It's not an obligation. And with that, I feel like you have to run to a concert, don't you, Dan? I have to. Yeah, I have to. I have to leg it now. I'm going to sort out some sort out some music, change into concert shoes because we'll be wearing cassocks, fortunately, so I don't have to worry too much. Oh, and okay. Head over to uh, head over to the chapel where we normally would have a rehearsal on a Thursday evening. Uh, where, but this time we're putting on a concert for I think something to do with staff at the university. We'll find uh, out when you get there. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. But I told you hilarious. to take the university staff. <laughs> um, so well, there won't be any correspondence this week. We will have bumper correspondence next week when we will have a guest with us, which is terribly Amazing. exciting, and uh, I'm very very excited to, to get him on. Um, but we will have we'll to make end sure the that we also with that with that week. Um, I feel I should preface. Um, we'll 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 do kind of like a bumper episode next week, just purely because I'm then away for. Well, and basically until the 31st, because yeah, then Chap will go away and then sing us immediately after. So it's going to be really busy. We'll Just as another a... thing, plug, plug, plug. Um, if you are a listener in France or you're a listener in Italy, um, the I forget the dates for singers. I think it's the 20 something to the 30 something. I'll say something. But basically, I'll be I'll be on my Twitter or whatever saying that when we're going to Rome and stuff, if you want to come and see a concert or you want to come and say hello or I want some help with seeing things and going around. <laughs> um, come and say, come, come. You know, it would be amazing to meet to meet folk over there and and to to help me with trying to be a cheesy tourist and not go to all the kind of oversubscribed places, but actually see something that makes it home for you. So yeah, it would be really nice. Um, do just kind of drop me an email or um, or on Twitter or something. Well. Uh, th- there we go Pl- lots of plugging as always but that is mm. that is uh all we've all for this week's episode what have we learned oh, hang on, that's your line sorry oh yeah so simon <laughs> what have we learned today uh, we've learned about tanvir sadiq uh whose grandfather was a papier mache artist and mm. uh he survived multiple terrorist attacks as we learned through a, a series of bizarre headlines uh yeah. in the in- indian herald i think it i think yes. it was yes it was um, no the, no the indian tribune wasn't it some something like that. I actually can't remember. Yeah, tri- tri- Tribune India. Tribune India. Yeah. Um, so we talked about that. We talked about how busy everything's been. We talked about merch, moving house. Moving house. Yeah. We talked about uh, some. We did some brief crisis. Uh, no, some crises plural. Cri- crit- critic oh. stuff. We spoke about some films. We spoke about. I once again plugged sorted food. Uh, I so want to get oh man if we could get those guys as a guest on this podcast i mean i already i already tried getting sideways on i tweeted at him because i tweeted his video and he he liked my tweet and i was like oh by the way if you want to talk about world of warcraft music uh, for two hours then no but you have a podcast for you uh so people do feel free to tweet at ethan from sideways telling him he should uh join us <laughs> but uh same with with ben or just the sorted food channel yep i i, I and to, to be honest i'd go i travel I'd go to London. I want to see their studio. I want to cook with Ben. I really like cooking anyway. Like I'm quite, I feel like I'm pretty handy in the kitchen, but yeah, he's, he's super cool. And that's all for this week's episode. Don't forget, oh, for f- <laughs> don't forget to, <laughs> to, 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 here we go.
That's going to take uh, take two. And that's all for this week's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your podcasting service of choice. You can like us on Facebook. And if you'd like to see our faces, check out our YouTube channel, Spongy and Electric. Questions for our guests, your thoughts on Deadpool 2, and other thoughts on the show can be sent to us at spongyelectric at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Join us again for another tumble down the wiki rabbit hole. And And we'll we'll see see you next time. time. Um, And you go for your life. Um, let me also get it up. I'll also get the Patreon thing up as well. We mega bounce. THX. <laughs> <laughs>